Hello, and we're back as Postprails. Um, today, we have our special guest who have already been here for a couple of times and none other than Darling Gooch. When it comes to Gooch, you know, his photos are so unique, be it on the, in, in, in line with the perspective, the angle, the colors, the treatment, the post-production, everything is going to be unique. That's the plus point of his work. And more than that, his energy level while he is on floor, that's rocking. From the beginning till the end, he keep that rhythm. So let's welcome Gooch. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? You're well? Good. Yeah. How are you? So, so I've got my energy juice ready on the side. <laughs> 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 yeah sugar sugar rush yeah we, ru we run it all with a sugar rush <laughs> need it at times but you know talking people it's, like say, it's a good feel uh, exactly. yeah, so how was you how how is how was you i mean any recent tip, trips to mara or anything in plan how is things uh, i went to the mara when uh, the grass was burning or I happened to go there when the grass was burning. Uh, you've put yourself on mute somehow, by the way. Huh? Uh, your, your mic is on mute. I think you've clicked it by mistake. Yeah. Oh, there we go, yeah. So um, I went there when the grass was burning, and uh, I decided to go all the way towards Star Lake, and I wanted to go for the crossings. Obviously, the crossings are happening on the other side of the park. So I kicked myself for that, saying, how could you have booked a lodge right on the opposite side from the crossing? Uh, anyway, we decided to go for a crossing, and we got there. And within 10 minutes, we got a massive 40-minute crossing. So that was really nice. And then, because uh, look out, that whole area, the gr grass was all black. Uh, mm -hmm. In golden light, I got a serval, we got cheetahs, we got zebra, oh, beautiful. Uh, then the next morning, we got uh, Luluka and Jilime, and again, golden light first thing in the morning, golden on black backgrounds, wow. which was really nice. And because uh, of the burn, the roads were really dusty with the ash. And as mm -hmm. the cars drove up and down, they created this beautiful dust which was reflecting the light uh, and then that afternoon i managed to get myself on the helicopter so i did a helicopter trip over mara as well honestly speaking to my guide and he was laughing at me he goes you've come for a night which you never do and you've managed to pick up a week's sightings within a night yeah so <laughs> crazy yeah that's the blessing of mother nature exactly exactly and uh mara is probably one of the best places for that you know i completely agree yeah and you you know i still feel jealous about those 365 days <laughs> in the mara yeah? we're still we're still waiting for that stuff to come out it's supposed to be coming out <laughs> <laughs> one year man it was, yeah, we're still uh, waiting it was for all those day. images huh? yeah some some wonderful moments so to, 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 the, the most important thing, did you miss pizza? Did you miss takeaways? <laughs> yeah, forget everything else. That's, what I, that's the worst part about being in the Mara. <laughs> I'm compensating and putting on weight. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to catch up on all the stuff you missed. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to catch up on all the mess I missed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like uh, uh, when, when we did the pause trails event in... Uh, yes. In Dubai. in Dubai, yeah, the Wildlife Week, and yes. uh, I, I was going with um, what are they? The guys who do the polar bears, uh, yeah, yeah, Frederick and Melissa. That's it. Uh, Frederick is what I was missing. Uh, Frederick and Melissa, and we got to the airport together, and I was like, "Guys, I'm going for a McDonald's," and they looked at me like, "Why don't you have something healthy?" And I was like, "This is the one unhealthy meal I get once in two years or something whenever I come to Dubai." <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah no. cool. right. so uh today we're going to be talking obviously about uh white background so everything on white uh yeah. we'll go through i'll open up the slideshow let me go to yeah. share and i'm going to put myself on a mute and i'm going to share in a couple of places so you can start to i, I can listen to you but you can start to share slowly 
Okay, so I've got a couple of videos in it later. Okay. And guys, if we have any trouble, we'll uh, we'll definitely uh, we'll, we'll definitely try and get back yeah. to it. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so I've done a share, and is it showing? You've muted again. I oh, can't sorry, hear you. Not yet. I'm not able to see anything. Okay, let's try again. Share screen. If it, is, if it is on full screen, it will not. So you need to. I'm doing window and yeah. keynote. Okay. Yeah. Oh, keynote. Yeah. Okay. It used to work perfectly okay. fine, but today but it's I don't not see anything as of now. Oh, cr cr uh, let me. It says I need to give permission for Chrome yeah. to tell. Give me a minute. We can keep talking while I do it. Um, moving the camera or try and stick my head behind the screen there we go uh, we need to go to security and privacy there we go i need to stick in my password should i say it out loud no i won't stay and privacy google chrome okay done so let me try again okay. and share Share screen, window, keynote, share. Any luck? No. Nothing. Would I need to? Uh, nothing so far. Okay. Yeah. Take it. It's by, oh, by the way, it's because it's a new computer. Yeah. The old one was sorted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's so the last cool. time we were talking about black and black, and now we have white. <laughs> Ever since I've got a new computer, and uh, that is the reason it is doing this. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it looks like um, Gucci got some trouble with his system. I'm waiting for him to get back soon. He's back. We shall restart the session. So he's going to talk about white on white. How do you? Uh, yeah, he's back here. Yeah, yeah. There we go. It's because I had to. Uh, it wouldn't let me. It, it, the, the, it was to restart. Okay. The girl. Yes. Chrome. Yeah, yeah. It was to restart, and yes, we hopefully, got it. yes, technical difficulty solved. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're here. Super. Okay. All so, right. Take over time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, take over time. All right, guys here. So starting. So um, we're obviously talking about uh, white images. And the reason I've called this who controls who is because it's all about you controlling the camera. And that's where the emphasis is going to be. Normally, I always put my EXIF data. This time, I haven't because I want you guys to also think rather than try and follow numbers and settings, which in realistic worlds don't really mean much when you can get the image and what it looks like on the screen is the most important part. Uh, the whole slideshow is about uh, whites and working with white backgrounds uh, and leaning more towards an artistic stroke, fine art touch and Let's see if it works out. Uh, I have an agenda as we'll go over through. I'll discuss the agenda and then we'll okay. pick it up from there. Slow and steady how it goes. Yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. And <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to normally I always put an introduction slide of who I am, what I do and all that sort of stuff. But I think I've done that so many times that I'm so bored of it. So I decided to do something different and just go straight into the features. You can see we've got uh, a lot of Nikon magazines now, uh, obviously yeah. Paws Trails uh, magazine. Um, you can see them there. I just don't need to explain so much. Uh, the change from last time is that I've had loads of features in newspapers. Uh, thanks to that Rhino running shot. Uh, I got a lot of uh, newspaper images, features, and then it moved on to elephants and buffaloes and lions. So I got a load of features over the last few months, which uh, they've kept me busy. <laughs> I must say they've kept me busy. But, uh, yeah, it's nice to be featured. Obviously, um, sometimes it's hard work trying to run around with all this sort of stuff. But, hey, it works, and that's what matters. And thank you, everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope you enjoy them. Um, moving on to the agenda. So 
here we go. So this is sort of the criteria. It's everything on white. Uh, we'll start off with general animals, basically herbivores. After that, we'll move on to cats. Then we'll have colored photos with white backgrounds. Okay. Uh, Passing through that, how to edit these images. That's the important part where everybody struggles. So I have a couple of videos in there as well. I should have left that last so it keeps you engaged all the way till the end, but it's there. And uh, the last thing that I'd also want to do is I want to discuss about compositions because uh, the realistic factor is I feel this everything on white is so easy to do. I need to talk about more stuff, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> we're going to talk about compositions and trying to tell a story or storytelling within compositions. So it's just basically showing you how to crop or thinking about cropping or what you should be looking out for. Okay. And fingers crossed, we all like it. So um, I'm sure we will. I, we have to somehow or the other. You have no choice. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you must say it's good. No, honestly, give us the honest opinions. Uh, as always, uh, if there are a lot of questions, obviously the question will be relative to the image that's come. Yeah. Feel free to stop me because it will help me break yeah. the fact of be feeling like I'm talking to myself. Huh? Yeah. So it will help break that factor. And uh, there we go. So next slide is start. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, a brand new image along, um, you know, we're talking about, uh, I think the first thing is put love into everything you do. That's the, this particular image that it's all about love. It's all about connection. So always put love in all, to your, all your images, always, you know, love your photography, love your editing. My biggest love about photography or the whole thing is the process, not only about the shot, but it's the process. I love going out there. I love finding animals for myself. Uh, I enjoy being the nature guy who goes out and looks for his own sightings and then finds them. And then you get the chance to capture the shots. You work on your camera settings. You come back home. You edit them, and then you, you you know you work on the whole thing. That process is so important to me. And uh, fine, I know there's a couple of people who use subcontractors to go and do the editing. That's totally fine. If you enjoy that, go ahead and do that. But for me, the whole process is about doing this and. I feel fulfilled when I get a shot and then I come back and make it a piece of art yeah. and post it up the way it is. So it, it it makes me feel like I've really achieved. And that for me, that making it look like a piece of art and that process is, I think, where I have the most benefit and the fulfillment of this whole thing rather than going out there with a fancy camera shooting, coming back, you know, that whole <laughs> process once you go you get a shot and you come back and you've got this shot that everybody loves or you love um you get a lot of love for it honestly it pulls everything together so the process is what i love and putting that love into everything you do it just clicks somehow or the other it just clicks That's good. Yeah. and then the next image you know you start building your family you start building the people around you and this is what i want to represent with these elephants that it's a whole big family these are the pillars of your strength you need to have them all on your side and the whole magic will all come back together yeah and without doubt this always happens then we fight yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is a fabulous image yeah uh, I, you, you know, normally I always go to Nairobi National Park on my own on the weekends. Yeah. And on this particular day, I went in with my son and he's beginning to enjoy a little bit of it. We go shooting in the mornings and then we go to the park in the afternoon. And we went into the park and the first thing we saw was a lioness hunt uh, uh uh, an impala that was so beautiful so rare to see as well and then uh, we finished that and i came to this water hole and honestly these rhinos put on such a show uh the last instagram photo of mine of the rhino kind of running towards the camera with yeah. the dust and everything these two guys yeah it's these yeah. two the image of love the first image is again these guys man it was just imaginary it, it was it was one hell of a day yeah, it really was. Yeah. You can see it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then uh, moving on, then, then we need to sometimes act like a reptile and slither away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. 
Yeah, and I've been sitting on this shot for maybe four or five years, and this is the first time I've shown it, huh? No, that's thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> a lot of these shots, you know, including this one of the rhinos, you guys are absolutely the first people in the world to see them, other than me, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, as we grow, we grow into families, the love, you know, you connect with kids and. You, you bring that whole sort of factor put together. And then the next part is you shuffle their shit huh? or shuffle their push. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I was looking for ways to explain this and I was like, okay, this seems to work. Yeah. <laughs> we got a message from Nick's eye. Uh, uh, just want to push it across to you. Uh, so starting with a wow, I didn't miss the live this time. Usually I miss due to work and yeah. just finished watching the dark side for the second time. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, really appreciate that. I mean, uh, the dark side, I did enjoy. It was a very difficult thing to do with these black images. Yes. Uh, the white images on the other side are a lot more easier to do. I uh, will show them to you. I've got some short, short sessions on uh, the editing as well. So fingers yeah. crossed we'll get everybody going. Yeah, And hopefully you enjoy time. this. Yeah. But yes. uh, as I was telling you, the most important thing always is the art. And we need to do this art factor and make it look... You know, yeah. I, I, you shouldn't put the artist away. I know sometimes we tend to talk about a lot of, oh, editing is fake and taking the shot in real is true. And I totally feel there's an element of, yes, you know, the original shot must be true. Yeah. If I was picking up elephants from elsewhere and sticking them in this image and trying to put that effect on in Photoshop, yeah, maybe. But this is truly from camera with a little bit of editing just to make it work and make it look or dis or put across the image as nicely as I can. Yeah. Uh, moving on to something I feel I love is fine art. This is probably one of my first few and favorite white shots. Yeah, That's to the great. point that we have this image printed and it's in my dad's office. It's in a one meter print at the back of his office and it's so, so gorgeous. I mean, that one, the few blades of grass that were still hanging in his mouth or her mouth mm -hmm. are really the key for me. And this is what made the shot for me. That's one. And of course, the extra long horn as well. Yeah, let's not forget that part. Yeah. The uh, and the background, everything <laughs> works well. You, you, you know what I feel with this sort of stuff is that it kind of puts the perspective or your eye just on the image. You don't have, your eye doesn't have space to run away into the white. So you're yeah. stuck on the image and you're only going to be looking at the image. And that's why I find this is so, rather than having this background that completely distracts you from the image, it brings you to where I want, as the artist, where I want you to take your eye. That's the best part about this. And there's more benefits, which I'll go through al along with it. Yeah. Um, you know what? I did a 2021 calendar. That's and right. the calendar was 100% white. Everything was these sort of white images. I didn't bother putting any color. It was all black and white. And it was all shots like this, just white backgrounds, just sort of very should I say, uh, fine art sort of look to it. it you know, when COVID comes and uh, you're all stuck at home, you find interesting ways to pass time. <laughs> this, this was one of the ways I passed time. That's cool. I mean, the result yeah. is amazing. Thank you very much. And uh, going on again, these are, honestly, at the moment, I can't get enough of giraffes. Every time I find two giraffes that look like they're going to interact or play, it's so beautiful and I'll spend hours, you know, I've left lions to go and take giraffe photos. And, you know, sometimes I'll be coming to other people in the park and they'll be like, oh, good, we saw some lions. They're like, forget about the lions. Have you seen giraffes today? <laughs> and guys look at me and, you know, their guests sitting in the car will all turn around and say, what? What did I just hear? Giraffes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's interesting. laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's how it works. And, you know, oh, we, uh, we that... all enjoy something. We had a very crazy sighting when I was there. I just want to put it across because you said you like giraffes. There was two male giraffe mounting. 
yes, yes, I've got one with three. I've got a photo with three mounting. And the reason is uh, it, it's to the hierarchy, who is the boss. That's oh, what yeah. it's all about. Yeah. So it's basically telling the guy who is being mounted saying, okay, I am, I, I am the, 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 He's the one who gets the mating then to all the females. So he's but the I thought, alpha. It, it, he's the alpha male. Okay, but it was quite. Uh, there was a female around, but this was a the the male who was in charge was quite a big one. And uh, but we thought it's just playing, but it was real in action. We have the videos and uh, some images for almost one and a half hours, which was oh wow crazy. Yeah, I mean uh, the, when I. Uh, when was it? When I got my Landy, the first trip mm -hmm. I did, I saw that. So we had three giraffes, two okay. males and one, uh, sorry, three males. And what was happening is the first male would go and block and then okay. the last one would come and mount the middle one. So this one would go and block him oh. and the other one would mount. And it was a crazy sighting, you know, <laughs> uh, Africa Geographic shared it. We call it the best Valentine's ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, was, this was one female and Female was absolutely not bothered. In fact, this the guy who was mounting on the other guy was also not bothered about the female. And he was kind of humiliating the, the other one. It was crazy. Uh, I wanted to say he was probably enjoying it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, I believe it's maybe if it wasn't the alpha male, at least it was one of the males who is trying to take strength over the other guy so he's saying i'm stronger than you so maybe they had a fight and one lost and that was uh the benefit of the other yeah okay yeah but it th this was the first time i was seeing it properly something happening happening but it was amazing yeah exactly you know that's the thing you find something so new so different and then you go there and you're like really does this happen when yeah. did this happen i've never seen this before what's going on yeah, yeah. so uh yeah, that's somehow or the other, you know, it works out. And yeah. hey, us guys as wildlife photographers, when something different happens, capturing it, seeing it for the first time, it's so beautiful. It's so important. Yes. Yeah. And it's so enjoyable. You know, you forget about all these other animals and you're focused on this. And, you know, one and a half hours with lions that are sleeping is so boring. <laughs> one and a half hour with, active, with activity like this is so amazing. Yeah, That's true. Okay, then yes, shot again. Uh, uh, saying that he already collected your um, calendar and it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, again, coming through, uh, trying to make it just, you know, I want you to focus on the run, the reflection. Yeah. And that line of where the wildebeest was running. That's, you know, just trying to keep keep it to that point you know trying to just focus where it is and again what i was trying to say is you with this you kind of make the subject your focal so you you're not really focusing on the background you're really not focusing on the ground but obviously you want to leave the ground in there because you don't want to just have a rhino hanging in the air but just trying to put it through and keep the focus on the rhino in this case. Mm -hmm. I mean, this rhino had so much to talk about in itself with respect to that horn. And it just somehow or the other, you know, it just makes it work. And then I, I like to go and revisit old shots because, you know, you always learn new techniques in editing. Yeah. And this shot I took in 2018, around four years ago, and I revisited it and I only posted it a few months, a month back or something, four years later. And, you know, the love that the shot got was amazing. And, yeah, I, I would never have tried to, you know, trying to work out the background, trying to make sure every hair, every bit of their fur is visible or skin is visible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And I did a series of, you know, elephants fighting, uh, giraffes fighting, these buffaloes fighting. Yeah, yes. so, yeah. And then next shot uh, from a balloon. And oh, this, the hardest part, this is probably one of the most difficult ones I've edited. And it was trying to maintain that, make the water milky white, but also okay. try and maintain the focal point in trying to show that the hippo is moving. The, the okay. waves that are going with the hippo, that was the hardest part about this shot. 
but it worked. How did you manage it? Because in Mara, the uh, the water as well as the subject look the same in color 90% of the time. I know. I was so lucky. We did the balloon safari from uh, Kichwa Tembo. Okay. Yeah, we did the balloon safari across from Governor's Balloons. And uh, we were really lucky that the, in this case, the hippo was very purple while the water was milky brown. Yeah, or that light brown that you have. And uh, we just tried to make sure in black and whites I could edit the brown separately and I got the purple okay. to a different point and then uh, a little bit of brush as well to try and make it work, which I'll show you guys later on. Thank yeah. you. And then uh, I like to put a lot of growth charts. You know, you can stick a growth chart in here. Yeah, I use yeah. these photos for my own uh work presentations i'll put these shots in this is a nice shot for a growth chart show that we're growing or yeah. maybe we can flip the image around and say we're falling backwards <laughs> yeah, or something like that. yeah it's a beautiful one yeah I, you know honestly what i was initially trying to do was i wanted the small one to be under the feet of the big one Oh, okay. But with the wind, the way what the wind was taking the tail of the giraffe, it would always be a distraction. Okay. So then I decided to do it very, very differently. Yeah, and hey, it yeah. worked out. It, it, the perspective yeah. is awesome. That's it. Yeah, you, and they're all adult giraffes. It's not like we've got mini miniature giraffes. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe <laughs> a couple of a couple of Lego giraffes and then the big giraffe on the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on to a shot I posted recently as well. I had never gone into that much detail on my subjects. And it was so amazing to see that all the little hairs and the detail on a zebra mouth, mm. just so detailed, so amazing, so different. I never imagined it would be that different. Yeah. And all, all, all thanks to buying a new 180 400 now for the teleconverter, I can go up to 560. So I'm trying to push it to new ways of photographing, trying something new and different all the time. Yeah. That's true. I, I, if I can stop you for a minute, we have a question. Yes, sure. Uh, so the question is from Prince. Um, uh, he is asking, what is spina photography? I have. I have a confusion between black and white photography. Is it fine art photography? So that's the question. Obviously, you can have color as fine art as well. Uh, fine art would probably be something that you would make look that would work beautiful on a wall if it does mean that you're pushing the limits on editing and things like that. So I'd push that towards fine art. I, I, I know I'm saying fine art, but fine art is really very, very photoshopped. Yeah, fine art is significantly photoshopped, but I'm keeping myself, obviously, I don't know much about Photoshop. I know much more about Lightroom and how to work with Lightroom. So for me, I'm happy with this balance that I'm doing. And you know what? I'm not going to say I hate fine art or super Photoshop jobs because I don't know where the future is going to take me. And maybe one day I might enjoy that. So let's not go around calling people all sorts of names because <laughs> I really don't know what the future holds for any of us. So I'm going to attempt with what I have and happy with what I have. And I'm going to explore and I'm going to try new stuff. And if I like it, I will post it. If I don't like it, I still have what I love. Yeah. See, everything is art, whether it is Photoshop or photography. Exactly. Some people add more photography to Photoshop, or some people have more Photoshop and less photography. So it's it's a personal choice. T totally. And, you know, for me, as long as it's creative, it's beautiful, yeah. that's what important i mean sometimes i see these guys who will have like a giraffe with a cloud and as the giraffe is stretching out it's eating the cloud you know it's creative yeah. it's beautiful it's different i love that sort of stuff whilst i don't do it but i yeah. love it and uh, whoever has put all that effort and made that illusion and that creativeness well done to you love it you know I mean, it's, not, it's not easy up you know exactly you know, out it's not easy at all Getting into every hair, getting into every detail and create something which is not there is definitely not a simple task. 
and I totally agree with you. I mean, just trying to get white background shots with every hair showing like this zebra shot, it's not easy. And you know, it's practice, it's attempt yeah. number one, and you failed. And it's attempt number two, and you failed. And it's attempt number three, and you failed. And sometimes it could take way more than that. But what yeah. great thing is the minute you master it, the rest will just work like, I mean, when I started photography, even trying to get a shot in focus was a hard part, you know, <laughs> you'd be there trying to fight with focus. Oh, yeah, I didn't get this in focus. And that was not and this wasn't right. And then it comes to a point where you get so natural with the camera that focus is no longer the issue. And then you have time to concentrate on composition, trying to concentrate on getting something different. And I've never been a person who uses manual, but suddenly I'm finding myself that because I want to get these overexposed or underexposed shots, I'm finding manual is simpler on that rather than trying to do a semi-automatic. But just because now the experience keeps, you know, as you grow, as you yeah. grow, then when I'm in a situation I don't know or I can't under seem to understand maybe a cheetah run or something like that, I will move back to shutter priority or go for a semi-automatic mode where at least the camera is also assisting me. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's always, you know, die-hard question. Do we shoot with manual all the time? It's tough. It can work when you've got time. But when you don't have time, I wouldn't risk it, even myself. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, a subject that's so difficult to get hold of, to photograph, especially getting a low level of a buffalo. It's been a tough one. Uh, luckily here, it worked out. I was in all Pajeta, being an ambassador for all Pajeta, I could <coughs> push the limits, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. not take risks. Push the <laughs> limits, but not take risks, yeah, because you. the last thing I want is a big buffalo hole in my car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but beautiful, you know, buffaloes, they're always muddy. And this one had this amazing white horns. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they love to stare. And this, yeah. the stare scares you more than anything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then for a lot of times, I use my shots for stuff like this, you know. Yeah. This is a perfect shot of the giraffe reaching, you having a little bit of a story saying reach high, dream big, you know, what I, just yeah. trying to push yourself on. Again, you know, slideshows. Yeah, maybe a lot of us don't do slideshows, but these days with uh, Zoom and everything, a lot of us are doing online slideshows. Yeah. Use your images somewhere. I know you use your images socially on social media. Some of you print them and have them at home, but go on stick them into slideshows at work and make a story to go with it and stick some works uh, pie charts or something to go with it. It keeps everybody entertained. You know, it doesn't, it, I, I know the work is more important, but sometimes yeah. there's always that one person. It gives more to the image. I mean, uh, the last uh, talk that we had for Hitachi, there was a special request from all the Hitachi guys that Gooch, we are only asking you to come and have a talk as a dealer because we want you to do a presentation <laughs> and we want you to put your images into it. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But then what I would do is I'd put these white images, I'd put all the writing. And if it was something that was really good, I'd make sure it's a love type shot. And if it was something that I wanted to talk bad about and put a fighting shot you know and do that sort of stuff. it worked so beautifully i mean everybody was so captured and one of the guys came across to me and said gooch this is probably one of the best light shows or best light shows i've ever attended and i'm looking at the guy and i was like are you serious yeah i'm so bad at it yeah that's awesome you know you you once you have an idea you have different means to explain it or and we being visual animals uh, Exactly. Sharing images definitely different. I know we are so visual as photographers. Sometimes people will try and explain something to me, and I say, "Just send me a photo. That's enough." <laughs> yeah, just send me a photo, and that should hopefully show sort it out for me. Yeah. 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 Okay. Moving on to the next one. I didn't want to just leave one portrait shot on its own. I thought I'd put two shots together. So you've oh. got two different portrait shots. They weren't together, so please don't feel that. It's just two portrait shots because I just yeah. wanted to put more and more into this slideshow rather than trying to make it empty. Um, I always feel white sometimes don't have a lot to talk about because it's very simple. You're taking the sky back and you're making sure you're overexposing. But mm -hmm. here we go, you know, 
uh, secretary bird, giraffes. Again, we've got giraffes looking down at a zebra. Yeah, but obviously two separate <laughs> images. <laughs> This is obvious. having fun, you know. Yeah, having fun. There's there's nothing more to life than having fun. Yeah, when you have fun, everything works out really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, we finally come to the tail end of herbivores, and uh, moving on to cats. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Giving you that look that's crazy, and yeah, uh, he was, uh, you, you know those this is he was the dominant male of the area you could see that in his eyes you could see his confidence and the guy was just walking around with that walk and you know he's been awake all night he's gone and he's done his territory was policing yeah. and now he's coming back to the females to sleep and oh, the look he gave and the walk he did it was just beautiful yeah and Moving on to the next one, sometimes, you know, it's hard to find lions. It's hard to, even harder to find lions on anthills, even harder to find a lion with another lion in the background and trying to make that composition of, you know, halves and all that sort of stuff and grass and white backgrounds. It works out, you know, sometimes you don't even find a lion, which is hard. I know in Mara it's not possible, but in Arabi National Park it is possible, yeah? But, you know, I always say it's not about cats, it's about enjoying photography. So we are, yeah. the first thing I am is a photographer. Even if I'm photographing grass, I'm happy with it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the days when you can't find lions, they tell you where to go with their tails. Yeah. They point it out <laughs> that way. <yeah. laughs> That's cool. Yeah. The tail direction is giving you yeah, a direction. The tail direction. So is it two kilometers or six kilometers? Where are we going to find it? Yeah. <laughs> Where are we going to find the front of this lion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And, and, you know, again, I was talking about this quite a lot, but the same sort of factor of, you know, you can put a little bit of a story, you can put images, you can put work related stuff. Mm -hmm. And I use so many of these shots, especially where there's a lot of space in the shot. So you can put some sort of pie chart, you can put a bar chart, you can put some sort of diagram, you can put some bullet points. It works. It works. Yeah. And best of all is you are talking about work, which hopefully should impress people. But at the same time, you're putting your own photography up there, which is also going to impress them more. Yeah. So it'll all work. Yeah. I need it'll to all stop work. Um, yes. There is one more question. This is from Abdul. Abdul Hussain. So on your last session, you talked about how could you see the final image? Um, uh, then you are taking while you're taking the picture, how do you judge an image, whether it will look great with a white background? Absolutely. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even looking at the comments. Now I'm back on the comments. I can see them. Absolutely the same thing. You know, uh, these shots, when I'm taking them, I've already got what I want to do with them in mind. So, for example, the cheetah shot that we were looking at, I, I saw the background. I'm overexposing the shot so that I'm getting that light blue or at least some clouds rather than going under exposure to go and get the details in the cloud. I'm going over exposure so the clouds are blown out and then we've got the ground and the cheetah. So obviously I am trying to work between the two. And if I'm unsure, I'll take one shot at underexposed, one shot at overexposed. There's no harm in coming back home and then deciding what you want to do with it rather than deciding in the heat of the moment because we we all look uh, we all know that when we go for a one week trip in the mara you come back and you've got all these shots and you look at them and you realize oh i could have done this and i could have done that but that's where you expertise in shooting raw and editing your photos when you come back because to do this in lightroom even if it was uh the sky was exposed correctly just overexposing the shot will fix it anyway yeah. And the factor is that since you've got so much white in the sky anyway, if you don't take this shot overexposed, your subject will be too dark in the first place. Yeah. So you are forced in some way to overexpose the shot, which blows out the sky. Yeah. So sometimes uh, it's it's yeah. it's it's not about uh, sometimes it's just a a fact of you the consequence that you're going to be stuck with it, or sometimes you really went and 
thought of the shot and then did did it as you wanted or did it uh, as you planned it but I mean, it's you know it's what experience too you know yeah exactly you know the more you go out the more experience you pick up and the more you know what you want uh, and if you don't have that experience take different types of shots be creative about it when you come back home sit on your lightroom catalog and have a look but what i always suggest and recommend is if you are going to the mara please take your laptop along because what you want to do is after every game drive or every day in the evening or in that time during lunchtime when you're not doing much i know we're all sleepy in that hot sun but yeah. take an hour every day to download the shots go and look at them yeah. you'd never know as you're looking at the images you suddenly realize a mistake or a potential improvement mm -hmm. and when you go out the next day you're already more smarter than you were a day ago and it just you know that's just a cycle you make a mistake you learn from it you move up you make a mistake you learn from it you move higher and you just keep that cycle going and that cycle is what you're seeing here today i mean i picked up i started photography around a wildlife photography around eight years ago and you can see that here i am trying to talk to you guys where i'm sure some of you guys have been shooting for more than eight years but for the guys who haven't been shooting eight years here is that process or here is that sort of thing saying let's go out there and let's change let's try it yeah get it and it's always about taking reviewing moving up taking reviewing moving up you know that's why we do past papers before exams you know you practice you practice you practice until your exam comes but the thing here is it's no exams you just keep learning and moving and learning that's true the more you practice the yeah. better you get grip exactly the more you practice that's what it's all about uh next shot uh black rock pride black rock female i wanted it to look black because she's on black rock and i was just trying to do that uh i hadn't had a plan for the shot but whilst i've not posted it it works great for slideshows again <laughs> yeah. yeah i think that's the theme of today how do we deal with slideshows <laughs> <laughs> it's again cool yeah. Yeah, it just you know it worked out. I loved it. You can see the female and uh, Black Rock is there. And um, I don't know if I ever told you this story. Or I'll tell it to everybody. Okay. So I was out flying uh, uh, on the helicopter, going over Mara. And mm -hmm. as we were flying over, uh, the, the the pilot was had um, he 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 works for a project which does elephants and. He, he was looking on the tracker on where the elephants were. So what we would agree to do is that we'll be flying over Mara. I'll photograph. He'll also go and check out some elephants to see their location, if everything is okay with them. You know, just we'd, we'd do a two-in-one sort of thing, yeah? yeah? And as we were flying over, one of the Black Rock males had a collar which had fallen off. Okay. So just as we flew over Black Rock and I said, hey, uh, that, that lion that you are looking for, he usually hangs around this area. Mm -hmm. And because we had the doors off, it's so noisy inside the helicopter. He assumed that I said, uh, there's a lion. And he banked the helicopter. We sort of turned around and went around in circles. Because where is the lion? And I was like, no, no, no. What I meant to say, <laughs> what, what, yeah, you know, what I was trying to say is that the lion that's collar, whose collar has fallen out usually hangs around this area. So if you're ever looking for him, this is where you need to look for. Oh, OK, 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 got it. So he banked up and we we're going towards sand river we carried on on our trip to sand river mm -hmm. and the next thing is i can see the pilot's not really concentrating he's looking down and he's trying to shuffle around the cockpit and he's looking around and you know he's looking around and it's like so i went to him i was like mark have you lost your phone mm. and he embarrassed looks at me and he says oh <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh so it's like, um, and luckily as well, is one of the passengers in the back was feeling nauseatic. So we decided to go and land at the Sand River. We went and put the helicopter on the island of the Sand River. So we'd be safe with all the water around us. And then obviously he starts going around looking carefully at the chopper and no phone. So I tried to call the phone. It's ringing, but it's not ringing anywhere near us. Yeah. Oh so, my God. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and the, the the phone was still ringing, which was the good part about it. Yeah, but he managed to get so, it. So um, we we had, 
Let me finish my story. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. So obviously we we went we 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 went uh, we dropped the the passengers. We had a second set of passengers. We flew with them to the other side of the park. We went to the headquarters. We picked up his laptop so he could do a find my uh, find my iPhone. Okay. And, uh, we then when we went in to do the find my iPhone. It was blank. The phone had no signal. It wouldn't go. I tried ringing it. It would just not. It wasn't in signal. Uh, about 20, 30 minutes later, as he flew off and went, I got that. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been to Kenya, but if you use a Kenyan SIM and somebody tries to call you, and if they didn't get through, when you come back into signal, it tells you that this number tried to call you if you want to call it back. So as soon as his number came back online, all the numbers that he had called from my phone to let them know that he's lost his phone. I called all of them and I said, Mark's phone is online. Please get the message to him to find it now. And an hour later, I get a call from Mark saying, hey, good. <laughs> so he found his phone and screen intact. And it must have fallen 100 meters from that helicopter. Oof. Yeah, on that black lock. Uh, black rock area, lock area, yeah. black rock area. It had fallen down. I think it landed on some grass, and the mm. iPhone was still intact. The screen was still intact, and we were laughing with him, saying that it's probably cost you more money to go and get the phone yeah, than what it's worth, yeah, because of That's fuel, true. fuel in the helicopter. Yeah. That's true, crazy, but you know, yeah. what a story! Yeah, what a story! That, that, that has to top up all my helicopter stories. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Moving on. Um, uh, Samburu National Park, a cub between the grass and just trying to work it in white that rather than green. It looked so beautiful. Yeah. And then again, uh, this is Chongo, the one-eyed lion from Mara, the dominant male in the uh, Topi Topi Plains area. And, mm -hmm. you know, the most important part of what I always try and do is, for example, in this case, look at the lion, look at the mane. You know, yeah. you can see it's not brushed. If it was brushed, the mane would be quite uh, diffused rather than, you know, working on the colors yourself or, you know, just trying to make it work. Yeah. yeah. And slowly, slowly, you know, practice, experience. Yeah. And then you do a peekaboo shot. Yeah. Where the leopard's looking at you around the corner, the lioness sitting yeah on a mount yeah so sometimes you know it just works out sometimes it doesn't and exactly. you just have to be ready and that's you know as i keep saying all the time is knowing animal behavior is going to be your biggest help in photography not knowing the camera yeah knowing the camera is important but when you have the added advantage of knowing the behavior or at least having a guide who can guide you and say Okay, uh, Gooch, I think this lioness is going to climb up that mound. The way she's behaving, she's going to climb on that mound. Gooch, this leopard is looking at you, or I think this leopard is going to come down. Just prepare. You know, the leopard looks like he, she, he or she wants to come down from the tree. Prepare. You know, those small important points completely change your photography because you already know what to wait for or what you want. It totally changes. You know, having the right guide. I mean, I've been to... Nisha's camp in the Mara and having their guides there who are so switched on this with this sort of stuff. It's really amazing. And uh, if you haven't been to the Mara and are looking to go, she's the one to catch or Herbis or whichever one of the two you prefer to catch. Don't catch me because I have nothing to do with it. But these two here, yeah, no one. Yeah, Thank so you. Well <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and then uh, the, the other story that we always said is what goes up must come down yeah so here we go <laughs> we've got a leopard going up and a leopard coming down and then we play the same game what goes down must go up as well <laughs> yeah so it works out you know yeah. yeah sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't work out you just have to be prepared um yeah now just trying to i again need to stop you i think we got balance slightly good yeah. which i need to stop you again because how do you get the leopard and yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just reading it how do you get the leopard and the lion in sharp focus i always have trouble with more than one subject i think oh sorry uh uh, uh what do you mean yeah, uh, it's 
two different photos. As I said, they're two portrait photos put together. It's not the same image. I'm sorry. Uh, that's what I was trying to explain. I'm sorry. I didn't realize this when I was putting the slideshow together that it would come to you guys as it's two. It's one image. Uh, it's two separate images. Yeah. Same with the leopard. The two separate images. I'm so sorry, Nick. Yeah. I hope uh, it's clear. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, here is where I was. I was trying to now break the balance and I was trying to do something different. And rather than trying to make an image 3D, I was trying to make it 2D by over over exposing. And in this image, all I wanted to do was I just wanted an image with the cheetah dots. That's all I wanted. And I wanted that line on the nose because I wanted everybody to see it's a cheetah with the dots. I was trying to go very 2D. If there was anything that was looking 3D, I was trying to remove it just by overexposing and overexposing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I still got the 3D effect because of the, the closeness of the dots or yeah. the, the way the contour of the dots took place. And yeah. I, I, I want to, no, I'm not telling this secret because somebody will do it before me. Yeah? <laughs> I, I, I'm but, doing the series in the same concept. Yeah. <laughs> so what I. I, I want to do a black and white series where it's only about sh the, the the shapes on the on the skin. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. a series that all it is is black and white, yeah. and it's overexposed. So the only thing you're seeing is the shape. So I'm sorry if I've already burst your bubble, but it's a plan that I'd like to. <laughs> no, it's fine because uh, even the same. I was trying to capture as many as species possible and working on it. <laughs> so it'll work out. I mean, I, when I did, when I posted this, I did a giraffe, a leopard, and this cheetah, and it worked out really nicely. Uh, I was happy with it. Um, what I did is I did the cheetah looking to the left, mm -hmm. the the giraffe in the mi middle looking at me, mm -hmm. and the leopard on the left looking to the right. So everybody was looking at the giraffe. So yeah. if you keep going on my Instagram around every third shot, the three will come together and you'll see what I'm trying to talk about. Other than that, it'll be fixed up. But in my case, it was a fluke. I, it started with a fluke because I forgot to, I was shooting video and I was playing with something and I forgot to change the settings. Then I got one shot which blew me out and I was shooting a rhino. So that gave me an idea, of course, you know, this can work like a different perspective. <laughs> then I started to shoot it. Absolutely. You know, the best mistakes make the greatest <laughs> shots sometimes. Yeah. So it's always great. You know, sometimes you put it at the wrong setting and you got yeah. camera blur and then you look at it and say, oh, this works out well. And yeah. then you go and you try to do that again and again and again. And Perfect. it never yeah. works out. It never works out. Yeah. But then again, you practice so much yeah. that it perfects it one yes. day. Yeah. I mean, my usual intention is that rather than lifting the ISO up to a point, mm -hmm. I just slow down the shutter speed and try and work with blur. Rather than trying to make these noisy shots that you know your camera, your lens, and yeah. the editing won't handle, why don't you play the opposite game? Yeah, Try something different rather than trying to push the limits and then talking about technical details when you post a shot <laughs> and somebody coming to you saying, oh, like, nice shot, but the ISO looks too high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forget that. Just try and be creative, be different. Yeah. yeah. So now we are going to go on to colored in white. Yeah. So, for example, here we have Kitili, who is the one eyed lion of Nairobi National Park, mm -hmm. but on a white background. Uh, I believe this is fig. I'm not very sure. I think it's fig. And again, we have the green, we have the golden light, we have the background, which is white as well, because it was a nice sky back. We were so lucky to be able to get low down with her. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she came and sat here, giving me opportunity to play around and try all sorts of different settings on her. Normally, you know, leopards are always running. You don't have time to think, you're just time okay. to photograph. Yeah, just time to photograph. Let's go, let's go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, playing again with it, you know, uh, that's cool. Crocodile, trying to make the water white. Um, ground hornbill, same sort of factor, you know. Uh, rather than complaining about the thing, try and make something that works. You know, let's have the grass in it. Let's have the hornbill. Yeah. Uh, same sort of factor. Lion is just chilling, looking in one direction or gazing in one direction. And you try and capture that. And uh, a, a new love of mine. 
I like to take shots like this. On this day, I was so lucky because we had a cloudy background, mm -hmm. but golden light still coming from one side. And mm -hmm. I've always wanted to capture a fish eagle with when it's making its call. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I have the whole sequence. I put it up on my Instagram as a sequence where the head went the whole yeah. all the way till it throws it back and comes back. Yeah. Yeah. And again, two shots in one, and just talking about how the two settle or just talking about my love because I wanted to get this um, mm. blur background, sorry, white backgrounds. Mm -hmm. uh, Depeche, how often do I use my buggy for low angle shots? Not a single shot in this slideshow has been taken using the buggy. Everything is camera, a uh, handheld camera. Yeah. yeah, not a single shot in this whole slideshow has been the buggy. Uh, buggy, uh, how often do I use it? <laughs> once in a while. Once in a while. I mean, this year I haven't even touched it. <laughs> yeah, it's been sitting in my car in the back all year round, but I haven't taken a single shot with it to date this year. So maybe a reminder: I need to go and get the buggy out. Yeah, <laughs> and. Moving on to the other version of the slide, so let's talk about how to edit the shots. Yeah. So here is a cheetah shot with the same sort of factor, mm -hmm. but the next slide is how it was in camera. Okay. Yeah. So overexposed. All I did is edit black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And you know, overexposing the shot. Now again, moving into uh, Lightroom. Uh, uh, is it working? Are you able to see this, the, the mouse pointer moving around? Yes. Yes, yes super. it works. That's fine. So here is just, you know, the shot of uh, Kitili that we just showed. Mm -hmm. um, this is my editing or what I do in editing. I've put all the Lightroom. This is probably the biggest backdoor you'll get into my work. Yeah, I've never, <laughs> ever put this up on a slideshow for everybody. Or should I put a, put a video of my editing for everyone to work? Um, Take into account that the time I used this, my computer was super slow. Now, if you try to tell me to do this, I could probably do it in half the time. But, you know, just simple things, working with exposure, working with highlights, shadows. And you can see as you increase the highlights, the whites become better. The whites already become better with that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. just a little bit of play. These are more or less my benchmark settings that I work with. Okay. Or at least every shot is individual. But when you can't get it, and yeah. you can see that there's still a bit of the white that's not 100% white. Yeah. So you just keep trying to play with the whites and the highlights to get there. Yeah. And when this part you yeah. still can't do, just use the brush tool, yeah? yeah. And uh, increase exposure, um, yeah. yeah. And then uh, keep on the auto mask, mm -hmm. keep the feather to around 50% and happy days. There is your white, <laughs> yeah? yeah. Yeah, it's it's quite simple. It's quite obvious. But, you know, I wanted to put this out there for all you guys because I want you guys to go there and get some nice shots and then we all have competition. Yeah, Let the <laughs> bar get raised and raised and raised. And not only this, this was a very simple one. I have then, uh, oh, sorry, you can use your overlay just to see the points you've missed out. You can cover them up. Yeah. How do you manage the edges? I mean, especially the main. There, there it is. I mean, the shot was white enough as it was anyway. Yeah, but when you have the auto mask switched on, it kind of does it quite well automatically. But you know what? If the shot isn't right in the first place, yeah, trying to use it's just it won't work. Yeah. You can then go and spend weeks and months and stuff. Oh, by the way, uh, I had an old investment that uh, if you can, uh, are you able to see me? You can put me no, back no, on uh, screen. One second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a Wacom. Okay. Yeah, so I've got a Wacom. I'm just about starting to learn how to use it, and I've got the pencil to go with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it removes that factor of trying to work with a mouse. It makes it feel so, I mean, trying to brush with a pen, it's so natural. It's like, you know, going back to school, yeah, going, going back to school and doing coloring. Yeah? It's yeah. so natural. It's quite nice, actually. Yeah, it's really quite nice. Uh, next shot I'm going to show you is way more complex. I had uh, a lot of time thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But the reason this shot really worked, and here we go, uh, I'll show you, let it go through. Yeah. 
And again, you know, we're going to try and get a white background, which is what today is all about. And you look at this shot and you're like, how did you do it? Yeah. Okay. And you think that oh, Photoshop and all sorts of magic that's happening. But yeah. today you see the magic as well. Yeah. So here we go. Just trying to get the uh, my bendy camera or my bendy, yeah. <laughs> my, my bendy <laughs> eye. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then simple, you know, we move into black and white. Uh, yeah. I always do a little bit of contrast, work on the highlights. And, you know, guys, don't always feel that you only need to go to the left. Try and play with both yeah. sides. Go to the left, go to the right. That It's, it's non-destructive. Your original file will still remain original. And yeah. when you get tired of it, it didn't work, reset and start again. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of good times, like how we did the blacks as well, is use the black and white mix. Yeah, yeah work with the colors that are in the background because I find that very important in having the right background to do the shot. Yes. In this case, the bouquet was so strong that it yeah. was very easy to do. Yeah, yes. again, brush tool. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you can just brush away the parts that you wouldn't be able to remove otherwise. Yes. Yeah, you can see how slow my computer was at brushing for so long before yeah. it really started clearing. <laughs> True. Yeah, but uh, hopefully now, now, now the computer is faster than my mind. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you need to share the configuration of your computer as well. You know, there are people who ask for that. So simple. Mini Mac M1. So powerful. Okay. Yeah, so powerful. I'm so impressed with it. Yeah. And then, uh, sorry, going back and you just increase the whites again and we've got the shot ready. You know what I mean? It's quite, uh, it didn't take us, uh, I mean, this was a live. It's not fast forwarded in any way. It's yeah. done. That's yeah? good. It took us, yeah, I mean, uh, I got carried away with talking. I got carried away with talking, but there's your shot. Yeah, and if you feel that you want the part of the vulture is overexposed, you can always use the brush again and underexpose those parts, but try and do it very fine, not big, big details that it makes it look bad. You know, very fine touches. You know what I mean? It's it's all about fine touches. Okay, the last part about this, let's move into compositions. And the first thing we wanted to do is talk about a story. And here we've got four of the same Yes. But it all with a different viewpoint or with a different location within the composition. You know, rule of thirds, I really, really love my rule of thirds. I like to say, don't follow any rules, but yeah. this rule of thirds is, oh, I, I, I love it. And you can see the difference in the image by yeah. just changing the rule of thirds. And for me, my personal view is obviously the bottom right. Yes. Yeah. However, if you want to tell a story, let's say there was another rhino coming from the back trying to chase them or something, then maybe bottom left would have been nice. Uh, yeah. Middle, it's nice. It's a bit boring. But the reason I would always go for the bottom right is because I'm trying to tell you the story that the rhino is moving in that direction. You know, it's all about storytelling. It's... It's showing you what I want to show you, but also finding a way to make the story more than just the subject. Yeah. I mean, wide angle photography has been so important and so important in my development because mm -hmm. it, it moved me away from taking 500, 600 millimeter images of this yeah. and brought me to understand the story. Rather yeah. than just talking about an image or talking about a subject, you now have a subject a sky, a story to go with it. And you as the viewer, your circumstances will dictate the story. Yes. Your circumstances, because your mindset at that moment will make the story how you want it to be. And you'll relate to the image more. Yes. And I think that is where the key comes in. And yeah, again, that is the left one cool. can't even talk about, you know, extinction. Um, these guys losing the numbers, reducing the numbers, and it's kind of moving from the frame. Can you know if you're talking about in an article about extinction and the threats which these guys are facing, we can use that as well. Exactly, magic. There you go. Here is Nisha, who had never seen this shot till now, has seen the shot, and she's made a story to go with it. 
you know what I mean? It's all about storytelling. It's about leaving that space for the storyteller to work with. And so many people, you know, look at my images and inbox me and say, we love your images because of the stories they tell us. And, you know, for me, the story is, yeah, I saw a rhino, I saw a beautiful sky and I took the shot. But that is because I was there in that situation. But for everybody else, as Nisha said, rhinos are moving towards extinction, you know, especially rhinos with such amazing horns and stuff. We need to be the voice for the voiceless, as you said. In lo- yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Still on the same topic, uh, telling a story. Leopard, sunlight, dust, rim light, looking in a direction, leaving space for the story to be told. Yeah, I always love that factor. I mean, I, it's taken with a D6, I believe. I could have zoomed in at this point, stuck the camera on the nose of, should I say, zoomed into the nose of that leopard, got the eyes in focus and taken the shot. No, but I decided I wanted to do more than that because it's sunrise, there's the burnt grass there, the leopard walking is creating dust, small things, you know, just small, small elements we don't realize we see this, but, you know, a lot of times it's within our nature to see this. You know, you have a conversation with somebody when yeah. you feel you can't connect with their eyes, you feel it instantly within yourself saying, OK, I spoke to this person, but I'm not sure if I should trust them because I didn't get that connection. Yeah. It's a sixth sense. And that's what you're trying to put into your images. It's a sixth sense when somebody goes and looks at it it takes you to a different level rather than you just looking at oh this leopard is so beautiful yes this leopard is so beautiful but there's a story to go with this leopard yeah yeah and i'm just reading from mr fire eater jonathan fire eater nice name though yeah that's what (laughs) caught me yeah thank you very much appreciate the message yeah yeah and then uh same sort of factor again telling a story you see, I've always liked to keep the eye on one side. You know what I mean? The bouquet yeah. helps, the eye is in focus. It's up to you to talk about. Or, you know, you and your circumstance will, everybody will have an, a view to go with this. Yeah, it might not be your perfect shot, but there's yeah. something to talk about. Yeah. And, you know, I'm so in love with eyes and so in love with what they think. You know, as they say, the window to the soul. And, you you know, elephants, the hardest eye, you know, as big and beautiful as that eyeball is. But, you know, how do you pick it up? Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. And again, you see here, I'm putting it into the third on the top, giving space for the elephant to view. I know the elephant is not looking in that direction exactly, but it just gives you the feeling that that's what the elephant's looking at. And that's what I said, you know, it's that sixth sense that we're trying to create with this imagery. Talk, you know, sometimes it's so, you know, it's hard to explain. It just comes so naturally. Yeah. And yes, I know I've been talking about a lot of eyes, but when there's no eye and you want to bring an image across, how do you break that? Yeah so typically mara so singular tree so beautiful skies the rain you know what i mean god no and the two two trees in the horizon again add a great perspective thank you yes i didn't even notice them yeah but we're, good point uh, you, you know the the thing for me is i think one day i was talking to this with one of the clients i was with in the mara we we will we will go i will go one day and photograph every tree from the mara <laughs> from every different angle and then come and do a whole story of just trees of the mara because yeah. not only the thing with the mara is those trees that are still there are so old the textures on those trees are so amazing like this one in the image the texture the angle and you know all of them have been trimmed by the giraffes have been eaten from below by all the herbivores uh, if they're still surviving for some reason the elephants don't like their taste they're still surviving <laughs> the elephants haven't broken them down you know it's all yeah. about so much detail in those trees and it makes the story so beautiful yeah true sure. Yeah, and uh, last slide is again trying to talk about is, composition oh. with a mix. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, it was Dipesh. He has a buggy shot. Finally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so how many rhinos are there in this picture? I'm just trying to count. Go on. I'll let you count. Let's see if you get it right. Yeah. Five. Yes. Correct. Five rhinos. Cool. Yeah, so you've got obviously the first one, the second one in the image, the yeah. third one between the legs, the fourth, yeah. and then the head That's just different. popping out of the fifth one yes. at the back. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And thank you very much. Feel free. Let's have some uh, questions. If anybody wants me to revisit a shot, if they want to discuss it, I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Going through the uh, questions, I think we we have some new ones. Uh, yeah. The leopard shirt was good. That's from Britik. And uh, thank you. Then Jonathan. Then uh, Radha Krishna missing Hermes. Hermes is in Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in charge as of now. Thank you. We should have a deal that Hermes must attend all these <laughs> sessions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last time he was in the Mara on a birthday party, wasn't he? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Now he always tried to make sure that during birthdays he is there. <laughs> Another beautiful yeah. word from Vijay. Beautiful session. Thank, thank you very much, Vijay. Yeah. I hope you guys appreciated it and thank you everybody. I mean, I had so many messages on my Instagram with so many people uh, confirming the time, the countdown timer and having a look and everything. Thank you so much, everybody. The love is so, 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 so appreciated. Yeah. And uh, if yeah. you're always, you know, if you are struggling with any shot, feel free to message me wherever I can help. I will help and I'm happy to do that. Thank yeah. you. And Akhil, uh, wonderful images and discussion. Hi, Guru. <laughs> Striking conversation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Subi, for attending. Uh, it's looking like UK is going to go on to the green list very soon. It's still on the red list, but it's looking yeah. positive. You'll be on the green list. So we've got a, a trip to Lentore planned with him. And uh, we've got Heli and Height. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Even I think I got couple, we got I was talking to a couple of people who were planning for this trip for almost a year and a half. Yeah, and because you know, uh, yes, yes, it's I believe India is already on green list, so India is open now. Yeah, well, are you in Canada? Good. Sorry, you're in Canada. You're still on the red list. I'm still on the red list. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still no, I don't. Think, I think you. I don't think you guys are on the red list, but I think you guys are not allowed to travel or you have to take special permission for it or something like that. For us, we have a lot of complications, especially when we get back. But I hope by September, things are going to be better. Okay. So, yeah. so when you get back, you've got to go into 14 days quarantine yes. and stuff. And again, okay. three days in a hotel, which is really expensive. Ah, uh, Okay. You've got a camp in the Mara, you own. No problem, it? <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> okay. hey, th thanks, Lamarck. You appreciate it. And uh, absolutely, thank you to the Pause Trails team. That was so beautiful. Uh, Prince, uh, is that again, a question you again? Need to, you need to give one more clarification because he sent this message some time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, so, so um, I think fine art photography would be more very photoshopped photography. So it could be like I was trying to explain, you know, we've got these images where let's say, for example, a giraffe is eating clouds. You, you know what I mean? There's so yeah. many beautiful, I mean, uh, Shaz Jung is a fine art photographer along with, um, I think, I don't know what the real name is. There's a guy called Ronald Dong or something like that. Yeah. And he's got this seriously crazy images. You know, like you've got a tree and the tree doesn't have any leaves, but the whole, the cover is a cloud. You, you know what I mean? Those, I believe, are the most beautiful fine art images I've seen. And the amount of effort, the amount of Photoshop work or the creativity, I think is the right word. Yes. The creativity in those images is so wow. But it's amazing. So uh, black and white, obviously, that doesn't mean it's fine art. It could just be a regular photograph in black and white. Yeah. 
again creating that concept and getting that perfection in photoshop is an art you need that kind of skill even to get a proper black and white with a proper definition is so difficult so exactly. when you're adding and elements to it that's even more complicated and putting all that aside the just the thought about you know that oh wow you know let me put a tree with cloud as the leaves you know like just yeah. where do you even think about where do you start thinking about that you know us guys as photographers until it doesn't come in front of us we can't see it yeah we, we have an imagination of what it might be but yeah. until it doesn't come we don't see it we are very visual and stuff like that yes. yeah guys always tend to be very visual anyway but you know trying to get that vision in and somehow or the other it works and yeah it's yeah. just sometimes, yeah. Oh, but by the way, I, I didn't show this, yeah. Wait, <laughs> my lion t-shirt, yeah. <laughs> so fine art. This is fine art, yeah. This, this is fine art, yeah. <laughs> that's how I should have brought it up. Yeah, yeah that's a cool pop-up. <laughs> uh, what? Which was your first? <laughs> that, that's fine art photograph. Uh, Nikon D fifty. Yeah. Other than the old. Uh, matchbox or point and shoot yeah. my first slr was the d50 uh -huh. uh, i still have it somewhere and uh it's i still used it on automatic i don't know how to use it i didn't know how to use it on manual then and um it used to be one of those cameras that i would you know how when you buy a new camera, the lens comes disconnected with the caps, the camera, the battery is put in a separate box. Every time I used to store it, it used to live in separate boxes. Yeah. And then whenever you wanted to use it, oh, wait, I need to connect the camera. Oh, wait, the battery needs to be put in. Yeah. And then uh, my son was born. And that's where the camera would keep it charged, would keep it on the table. Every time he did something interesting, something new, photograph, photograph, photograph. And uh, I think the factor that I didn't really want to get too technical about photography is maybe where the eye for composition came in. Because that's, you know, like I've taken a shot. This one looks so crap. But at the same time, I took another shot and this one looks so amazing. What is it about these two shots? I always ask. And, you know, when you go and look at, for example, my shots and when you go and look at other people's shots, don't just look at the shots and say, wow. Yes, do that, but also go at it and look at it and say, okay, what is this? What about this shot is what makes me drawn into it? And once you start understanding that formula of composition, trust me, you will start using it in, within your own photography and it'll start coming together slowly by slowly. Yeah. 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 Have you ever used Canon or any other type of camera? Uh, I am a Nikon guy. I use everything Nikon. And yes, I have had a play with uh, not so much Canon, but a couple of friends have Sony's. We went and tested the Alpha 1. I was impressed, but I'm stuck with Nikon. The investment is so <laughs> high. Yeah, the investment has been so high that trying to move to another brand is virtually impossible unless the brand offered to give me everything free of charge <laughs> intent if any of you brand guys are out there <laughs> there, there no. is an offer <laughs> there's an offer no but honestly i mean uh, nikon has been so amazing with me they have really supported my journey um you know if i can call up nikon and i say guys uh I've got a proposal. We want to try and do this. They'll always listen and they'll always be a part of it. So hats off to those guys. They've been so supportive in my journey and I will be supporting them in my journey in return to their support. So it's a two-way street. You know what I mean? Life is a two-way street and their support versus my support we go both ways. I mean, the other day we had a client whose camera had an issue mm -hmm. and Nikon Nairobi called me up and said, Gooch, we are in trouble. We need a D5. We can rent it from you. Mm -hmm. or, and this client has come from a long trip. His camera's got an issue and he's really stuck. He's going to, I didn't ask where he's going to. And they said, um, could you please let us borrow your camera mm -hmm. and let us know how much we should uh, pay for renting it? And I was like, no, guys, I'm giving this to Nikon. Mm -hmm. Have it totally free of charge. You guys support me. And here is my my return to you guys. 
as well as photos, but it's a two-way street. You know, one day or the other, you know, all the guys, you know, the yeah. uh, Narendra, uh, Cesar, Akshay, Tarek San, everybody has been so great. I mean, Sri Ram, everybody has been so great in their support to me from Dubai. Uh, the guys in Nairobi, Dashni, you know, everyone has been so good with their support that it's now become a family to me. It's no longer, oh, there is the manufacturer and there is the supplier. <laughs> no, no, it's everybody's a family to me and it's so beautiful with them. Uh, That's one thing I noticed about Nike, and they always try to support. And they don't, uh, they don't let you hang. Uh, they don't leave you hanging loose. For, at yeah. least for me, they've never left me hanging loose. I Again, if I'm, I know, I know if I'm going to go and ask a stupid question, I will get a stupid answer. So I try <laughs> not to ask a stupid question. And you know, we support each other, and that's the way. It, it, it's a two-way street. Don't expect a brand manufacturer to throw everything at you with nothing in return. They also want something in return. And in my case, at least images. Uh, uh, did you see the Elman Taita video? Uh, no, I don't think. The, the video with the flamingos and all that. It's on no, my no, Instagram. I haven't. I, last couple. You, I mean, if it is recent one, no, I haven't. Yeah, it's a recent one. It's got the uh, flamingos. Hey, I tell you what, I could probably share it yes, now. Please. Let me That's try and see yeah. if yeah. I can find it. And uh, DSLR versus mirrorless, while we're trying to do that. Uh, I'm so happy with both. Both <laughs> are just so amazing. I don't even know how to, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're both so amazing. I don't even know how I can ever come back and say, no, this one, or they're both so amazing. The best part about it for me is I'm still using the DSLR on my eye. Yeah. And the mirrorless because of their size and weight factor for my buggy, for my gadgets is where the mirrorless goes. However, I did my last helicopter trip and I used the Z7 II with the 7200 2.8. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Yeah, impressive. I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed it. Okay, so here we go. Share video file. Uh, the video file is here. Okay, uh, there we go, there we go. Okay, uh, are you able to see it? Yes. And here we go, playing it now. As a wildlife photographer, you want to be out and about before sunrise. Using the new Z7 II, we wanted to capture large groups of flamingo with the backdrop of the Rift Valley Escarpment. The overnight cold air created the most gorgeous mist over Lake Elmantaita. As the sun rose, the clouds broke and gave us this beautiful backlight. In a frenzy of excitement, I got very trigger happy. This is one of the last few pelican breeding areas, thanks to the rising waters of the Rift Valley Lakes. The inbuilt slow motion feature works seamlessly and to a professional filmmaking level. It gave me the ability to spend more time capturing content instead of worrying about settings. Imagination doesn't do justice to the millions of flamingos you see here. Another new interesting feature was the animal eye detection that picked up the eye of even the most difficult of species. As we continued to photograph into the night, our change of diet didn't deter us from testing the focus system and ISO handling. 
both worked remarkably. Until we meet again, dear flamingos. That was amazingly put together. Thank you. Karan did a super yeah. amazing job. He's so amazing at his work. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, and, and me just faffing about, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's, it's beautiful footage and including the voiceover sounds so cool. You, you know, we were trying to get Karan to do, because, you know, the filming part of it, I have no clue, and Karan was doing it. And mm -hmm. at one point, he's like, Could you just deal with it, yeah? So I was talking on his behalf, I should have said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, everything together, yeah. it's really beautiful. Thanks. Thank you very much. It was a big effort. Fine. We had a great time. And uh, again, thanks to Nikon to surprise us with all these cameras that we could go and play with. So that was the mm -hmm. fun part. Yeah, it's always good to go and try and experience something new. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think they are just, coming up no. with something amazing, and uh, hopefully some lightweight lenses too. Let's see how it's going to go. Been my, my, money, my, 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 my money is ready. My money is ready. <laughs> yeah, I just want to spend. Yeah, <laughs> you're talking about the Z9. Yeah, Z9. Yeah, my my money is ready. I'm just waiting for it to come out. <laughs> Z9 is going to be a beast. I think so as well. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Yes. I, I think the questions have uh, I think it's all deteriorated. Yeah, everything yeah. is done. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for attending. Uh, ethics on wildlife photography. Uh, always a tough one, but you need to be the person to draw the line if you feel that you are disturbing the animal or not because you are the only one along with that guide that you're sitting with who understands what's going on yeah. and if the guide is still pushing the limit you as the photographer should be the person saying okay stop this is enough yeah this is stop this is enough i can see the animal is getting disturbed uh, please take a break because as long as you are going to be showing that guy some dollars, he is going yeah, to push the limit because he yeah. wants those dollars. Unfortunately, there's a lot of guides who, not unfortunately, as well at the same time, they need to feed their family. So yeah. money is an important income and they will push the boundaries to earn that money. Yeah. However, if you are going to dangle a lot of dollars and say, do this, I'm going to be putting these dollars in your pocket he will push the limit. There's very few guides who will actually say, no, yes, I don't yes. care. We're yes. going to draw the line here. So and it's, it, 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 it's very sad when you see certain steps, but you know there is no way. We, the only way is self-realization and uh, doing the right thing. That's, exactly. That's you that. know, th th there's so many ways to do this. There's so many ways to put together. There's sometimes, uh, for example, there's all these shots that I've got of rhinos trying to run towards me. Yes, they're running towards me, but they're not coming to attack me. They're trying to run away from a different situation. They've been fighting with their other, with, they've been fighting with other rhinos. And I happen to be at the right place at the right time while they were trying to escape from the other. I happen to be in the right place. And I assume the luck, obviously, in being in the, the, there, but also the ability to read the animal, to be calculative on the next position is yeah. also important. Yeah. And those sort of things. So, yes, you'll see a lot of shots of mine that look like the rhino is charging or I'm scaring the rhino, but it's them fighting between themselves. And I'm just utilizing that opportunity to get a great shot. Yeah. Right place, right time, camera on the finger on the trigger. Yeah. Again, you know, you, the more you try to understand about animal behavior, that helps a lot. Your patience is a key over here. The, the the problem what happens is you forget about your patients and you only think about the outcome it, it should be a journey and it shouldn't be to trouble the animal so that's something which every all of us need to keep in our head yes uh, one thing that i'd like to add on to this is uh if you have seen my low level shots and stuff like that i mean to try and get one shot it's not Let's go out, put the camera on the ground and expect everything to work. It's not, it's 
put the camera out. First, I have to work on securing the camera, making sure that I've got a case sturdy for the subject that I'm going to photograph, because elephants will definitely crush it. Lions yes. will definitely pick it up and go. Yeah. yeah. But you want to make it in such a way that the lion looks at it and says, this is of no interest to me. But when you make it into a way where it looks like interest to the lion, he will pick it up and go, or she will pick it up and go. But when you have it of disinterest, you will just get the lion coming, will have a yeah. sniff, wouldn't like it, and will walk off. You know, so again, I where do you draw the line on what is um, ethical or not ethical? I'm not sure. But as long as I'm not injuring the animal in any way or disturbing it is obviously, for me, the ethical part. Um, you know, then again, uh, everything in nature is so wild. Yeah. They see things and, you know, we... We, we go to the park with cars, vehicles, and we go and break our vehicles and leave parts hanging around. Is that ethical? Shouldn't we be going on walking safaris? Go into the animal. We are going into the animal kingdom. We're going there with these diesel engines, smoking away and going there. So where do you draw the line? That's the factor. So we have to be very obviously judgmental of what we are doing with trying not to disturb. And the biggest for where I was trying to get to is to get one shot from one of these devices is not a five minute job. It's a day's worth of preparation and then days worth of trying to get everything right on the field. And what I've realized from that is if I go and spend five minutes and go and stick my box down there, the first reaction will always be of any animal to disappear. Yes. What is this guy doing? But if you go and spend two, three hours with that subject, they get so used to, to you that now you can start coming to their or coming to that inner circle of their boundary rather than being at the outer circle okay. that they see you and run away. You suddenly start moving towards the inner circle of their boundary. And that is where the magic will start. As soon as you can start getting into the inner circle, the magic starts, that factor of, oh, wow, this impala looks good. Doop, doop, doop. I've taken five shots. Okay, let's move on. Let's go and find some lions. Oh, here are some lions. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, let's move on. Let's go and try and find some cheetahs. That's not how wildlife photography is done. Wildlife photography, I do it like, oh, wow, uh, this landscape looks amazing. And if that elephant comes here, it will work out so beautifully. So I am going to be patient wait at this part of that landscape and hope that elephant comes here and when that elephant the landscape and the background all connect is when i'll start shooting yeah yeah, yeah that, um, that's how it, I, yeah. when it comes to ethics yes you, you know our presence itself is actually not good for them but when you're connecting it with conservation if you're going tourism is definitely a big way to support the people around the place yeah. the moment you're not supporting the people around the place it's going to lead to poaching and a lot of other issues yes so, they need food that, that and it's not poaching food. yeah it's not poaching for the elephant's tusk it's not poaching for the rhino's horn it's poaching a zebra it's poaching an impala yeah. for food bringing food, food onto the table yeah so you need to think the balance yes totally agree ethics that that's what we always say you know ethics is a personal thing you need to understand where we stand or where where should we stand exactly so and, I'll leave it and, and that. The, at the same time i've done a lot of work with uh, mara elephant trust abuseli trust for abuseli trust for elephants uh and can taylor fund and I've learned so much from these guys about behavior because these guys will follow. They'll try and find out what's going on. The elephant goes into uh, the community. Why is the elephant going into the community? These guys are doing that sort of research and they're trying to work out those factors. And you go there and you learn from these people. You talk to them. You understand the animal better. I mean, when I went the first time with uh, Amboseli Trust, and we went and put the ground level camera and we drove away from it. The, the, the 
interaction that the elephants did with that box, Amber Sally Trust loved it so much that the same family of elephants, we every time the family would cross, they would run to the camera. They'd say, Gooch, go and pick up your camera. We're going to put it again. And we'd go and put it again. And then we'd go and put it again. One family, we actually put it down six times as they walked. We just kind of kept on going in front and putting it down because these researchers, they, they, they really loved the interaction. And uh, the photos came out so amazing. And what we did was we auctioned the photos and the money was given 100%. I paid for the printing from my pocket and the shipping. Uh, we sold one print, some massive print to Australia. So the printing mm -hmm. and the shipping, I paid from my pocket and all the money we got went straight to Ambassadi Trust. It was That's so great. amazing. You know, the happiness on those guys and everything. It was so great. I loved it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, conservation photography is all about what you're doing with your photos uh, beyond yes. social media. Yeah, so yes. that's that's all about it. Yeah, and for yeah. sure, you know, all of us have invested a lot of money in equipment. We also want to make money selling some prints. Yeah. But wherever my print can work for a conservation cause, they're happy to take it. Uh, prints for wildlife was one. There's some more coming up. So keep a watch, you know. Yeah. Things will happen and let's conserve yeah. this amazing environment we have and let's look after it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So I think we kind of covered almost all the questions. So once again, on behalf of our viewers and on behalf of Postrails, thank you, Butch. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And thank you for everybody attending. You're sending me messages to my inbox. I appreciate it. And I'll reply to all of you one by one. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So that was good as always, as always mentioned, you know, being with Gooch, now it's almost one hour 35 minutes and we didn't miss a single minute. So that's the kind of energy this guy always holds. He's always a energy bar, as he put it across. So that was great. And uh, let's hope the next one is going to give us the same kind of information, with a different topic with uh, the same enthusiasm. Till then, you all please take care. Please don't forget, it's still COVID time. Make sure you're getting your vaccination done if you still haven't and whenever you're going out use your mask and keep your hands clean because you have a lot of variation right now whether it is delta theta i don't know how many names we have so please make sure you are safe okay on that note i'm going to say bye till we till we see again take care bye bye <laughs>